All right, so let's start. So can you all see my screen? Yeah, uh, um, I shared a PowerPoint presentation. Great, thank you. Thank you for feedback on the chat box. Yeah, that's probably is the methodology we want. So today, uh, what I'm going to do is to uh, looking at a, a practical aspect of uh, Fourier transform, um, namely uh, DFT, FFT, and uh, short time Fourier transform as well. Okay. So if you have MATLAB, you can also start a MATLAB, and we will run some demo later. But again, you, you can always run the demo uh, after the lecture because I upload some code on the Moodle. I will point out to you later, you can run that demo and how we're going to achieve the um, <coughs> experiment result as I demonstrated in the lecture. So uh, first slide, we're looking at uh, Fourier analysis. There are a couple of uh, different type of Fourier analysis. Um, what we're looking at, so it's it's kind of Fourier analysis is an umbrella of all this um, DFT, FFT, even continuous Fourier transform. But in my module, I'm only looking at discrete uh, Fourier transform, discrete Fourier transform, which is in the last category in this slide, periodical discrete transform. Why it is periodical? Because people uh, we are wondering we are dealing with any arbitrary audio signal, so that may not periodical. So this periodical doesn't necessarily mean we're only looking at sine wave or sawtooth or square wave this periodical signal. This periodical basically means we are treating the signal as repeating itself. Okay, so this is very <laughs> subtle uh, concept. Don't, don't necessarily matter. It doesn't matter if you don't get that because this is a, uh, to have a mathematical uh, um, accuracy when we derive any algorithms. That basically means if you take a piece of audio, we only be able to take a limited number of audios. Yeah? So one second piano or one second vocal, that's one second. When we're doing discrete Fourier transform of that one second audio, we assume this one second will repeat itself into infinite. In that case, we can actually apply our algorithm. So uh, just a quick review of last week what we did. We did a Fourier decomposition. So we um, talk about the mathematical rules to do the Fourier decomposition. So basically what we say is we have n point signal with any arbitrary. We need to divide that into n plus two signals. Half of them sine waves, half of them cosine waves. So this uh, um, statement actually, uh, if you think about it, if n is very large, for example, n is ten thousand, uh, then you sort of uh, think about ten thousand plus two, you have uh, five thousand to one sine waves and five thousand to one cosine waves. So in roughly, you can think about any endpoint signal, a half of will break into the cosine sine wave components, but only half the number of the endpoints, around the half, but actually is n plus two divided because we need to look after the uh, start and end point. So always those sine cosine waves have certain uh, regularity. They start with zero completed cycle of n samples, basically start with zero frequency. And they, the frequency increment in even steps until the last sine or cosine wave will have a n completed n completed uh, uh, samples. Basically, if you for uh, sorry n, div n plus two divided by two complete samples, so it's very kind of a just a tongue about uh, that. But again, so basically, what basic uh, it means is if you have uh, sixteen samples, as we use the last uh, uh, weeks. Uh, slides, you will have nine sine wave, nine cosine wave. So towards the end, you have the highest frequency of the last sine cosine waveform will be eight. We don't know the unit yet at the moment, unless we know the sampling frequency. We just say zero frequency, eight frequency. Okay, so well, it it actually works for both sine and cosine components. 
so the key thing is to get the amplitudes of these sine cosine waves uh, and store those amplitudes in uh, two arrays, two arrays. So we normally store a cosine wave arrays in into a, a variable name. Normally we give the name called rex, real axis. And then we store the sine wave amplitudes in a variable called rmx. So rex actually representing real and rmx representing imaginary in terms of complex number, in terms of complex number. You, everybody knows, I mean, if you don't know, you can do a big, a little bit of catch up about complex number. All the complex number consist with real part and imaginary part. So the cosine amplitudes, which is the cosine components amplitudes are real part of the complex number and the sine components part will be the imaginary. Okay, so the, these two are the equation, how we calculate a different um, amplitudes of those uh, sinusoidal waveforms components, all right? So the first equation showing how we calculate the amplitude of cosine waves, certainly. So K, the index K representing the different uh, components with different frequencies, all right? So for example, k equal to depends. I mean, saying I think a k from one to uh, uh, n or from zero to m minus one, depending how you index it. In MATLAB, actually, k has to start with one. Any other programming language, the index can start with zero, so it will have n uh, different n plus one, basically different k's. So each of the k. So for example, when k is first value, k equal to one. If we're using MATLAB, then that represents zero frequency, the DC. Then they equal to one, two, three, four, then the frequency getting higher and higher. Okay, so that's kind of the equation behind how we're getting them. So literally, this is just a correlation. So you've got the original signal, which is in XI, and you correlate with a, a, a cosine waveform. And this cosine waveform have increased frequency, which is by this K here, all right, by this K here. So, and then you do a multiplication and the summation. So this is big capital delta is summation. You sum them together, you end up with uh, a group of amplitudes. So, okay. <clears throat> so, um, but in MATLAB, we can do that fairly uh, easily. Okay, so let's look at how we're going to um, implement this in MATLAB. I, it is, it, it is this, this implementation doesn't exist in MATLAB because MATLAB implement the FLT. All right, so let's look at this code uh, here. All right, so I'm going to put that code in uh, a box, uh, a MATLAB, see if I can uh, add share different uh, window. So here we got, um, an example of a real signal. This signal is sine wave with frequency at 400 hertz and sampling frequency 8,000 hertz. And the length of signal is 32. 32. So uh, what I'm trying to do here is to uh, demonstrate a real signal FFT calculation and the implication and how in practically uh, we treating how we treat those uh, uh, kind of uh, side effects or how we adjust the parameter to make have uh, make you have a good result. Okay, so if I can try to share my MATLAB, I'm not sure if uh, that works. Just just bear me a second. Let me get the MATLAB uh, font a little bit bigger. Okay. All right, so um, how to change in the share? Uh, MATLAB. Have you, can you see my MATLAB window? If you can type to me, that would be wonderful. Uh, the font is readable. Yeah, okay. So. 
it is readable method app. So, okay, so uh, because it's quite a small uh, window in my computer, I'm not sure if, uh, um, yeah, I can also uh, try to be also, sorry, just bear me a second. I maybe also put MATLAB font a little bit bigger. So even on my screen, it looks big. Okay, so now it's probably should be clear. <coughs> All right, great, thank you. Uh, so, yeah, so I copy paste in, in my uh, PowerPoint slide, the, the section I put in the PowerPoint slide is actually this section here, I highlighted in MATLAB, so the second section. So the first section really is something like a decoratable, decoration. So I said width equal to three, height equal to three, AW, ARW axis, uh, front size 14, line size two. So those are uh, something I try to plot a nice picture. <laughs> so I define those parameters. You don't need to worry because if you, without this code, if you, for example, I here, here, if I run this code, uh, let me run the code. So uh, run. I will get a plot, but you probably can't see plot at the moment, isn't it? So I just, uh, because it's in the main, main window. Now, can you see the plot? Yeah? Yes, okay. So yeah, I, I figured out how to do it because I only shared, if I share desktop, that's too much messy things. And also the window, I share this window, but I can snap this plot back into MATLAB. All right, so this plot will uh, always produce a nice, uh, uh, language and the di diagram for me to have a look. So that's basically it. So if you delete delete this uh, line with the color, uh, and then you just uh, by default it will have very thin line with, and also color will be some sort of blue. Okay. So yeah. So this slide shows we are generating a thirty-two signal. So I only plot. Uh, for example, this line here, basically only plot using stem rather than plot. Stem will give you a discrete, a discrete sample, such as this diagram. So if you can look at this diagram, that's the diagram we use stem produced, stem. And then rather than just link them together, because I want to show the discrete um, kind of property of the signal. So that signal, then we can do a Fourier transform of that signal. Okay, so. So what, what can we do for a transform? So if I go back to my pole point, uh, which I'm not going to switch uh, that. Okay, so, okay, so. So I think still go back to pole point is a bit better. Okay, so, okay. So what we did is we produced these 32 samples of sine wave, 440 Hertz. So then we can look at the number. So those are the sample numbers. That's uh, everybody would understand number. And then to implement to implement uh, the DFT, I did this algorithm here. This algorithm here. So this algorithm is written by me. All right. So this is a formula. So it is a, a straightforward way to implement. Uh, Fourier transform or DFT, discrete Fourier transform, because we're dealing with discrete signal. Uh, and that is not implemented in MATLAB because MATLAB has their own function called FFT, which is a fast way. So this is a slow way to implement that. All right. So we actually uh, does this by two for loops. So I put them together. So I create these two variable, uh, IEX equal to uh, a number of zeros and IMX equal to number of zeros, because L is the number of zeros. Then we goes, go to a loop for nested for loop. So we have in, inner loop doing this uh, uh, accumulation of each one and outer loop. And we also uh, a, a changing the frequency of each inner loop. So basic outer loop is you, you, you vary K, which is index. So actually, uh, the equation is not very clear if the logic. So if you try to understand my code, 
if you really want to understand how the DFT works internally, the code will demonstrate a better idea because in that way, uh, you know how the, each of the number increment. And you can say here, I have to do a K plus one as index because if I, the outer index, I start with K equal to zero until L minus one. So basically they going to loop L times, isn't it? From zero to L minus one. However, uh, because MATLAB cannot have index from zero, so I have to start with one. So every time this is k plus one. So when the when k equal to zero, uh, the we we actually start uh, feeling the value from ix one, ix two, and so. On. Okay, so that's kind of a, a data we use. So okay, so we basically can then copy paste the code into my MATLAB window, which I'm going to uh, demonstrate later. Okay, not necessary now. I think probably just do by stage. And then what we have is to uh, interpret a result. So interpret result, which basically says uh, we need to calculate the absolutely number of this value to be able to get magnitude. Okay, so magnitude. So the DFT result is constructed as uh, CXK, if I call it CXK, and it will be real x plus i m x imaginary x multiplied by i i is a uh, imaginary factor which is uh, just demonstrated this number is imaginary okay so then what we can do is to looking at my code here okay so i'm going to share my uh just bear me a second the Share my MATLAB code, okay, so to make it working, right, so we can demonstrate it there. So share my MATLAB, okay, here's MATLAB. All right, so, okay, so now I copy paste, okay, I copy paste this uh, DFT algorithm here into uh, MATLAB, okay, so it's messed up a bit because we have to have a lowercase. <coughs> So, so what this demonstrate is uh, go calculate the imaginary part and the real part of amplitude, which is the sine wave and cosine wave components amplitudes. All right, after that, what we can do is to have a complex number. Okay, complex number. So what we can do is have complex number. So complex number equal to complex ix imx. So then we can actually display um, display the complex number. Okay, so let's have a display for. I'm going to do a simple for loop to display first the ten complex number. All right, I've already prepared my code, so I don't need to coding offline. So here is to display the first value of FFT. So this section, our highlight section, actually does a discrete Fourier transform. So let's run that section, see what happens. Okay, so you see underneath this uh, demonstrated window, we can see that's the result, which in the form of real number plus imaginary number, well, people might say just plus zero, but actually they should have some small numbers here. So if I'm going to double click CX, so maybe it should display uh, a purple value. Yeah, you can see there is imaginary, which is 0, 0.00 and until, and a very small number actually, very small number, but it does show this is complex number because you do have both sine wave and a cosine wave components. I'll come back to the code. Okay, so that's the uh, C, CXR is basically showing the the result of FFT. So that actually applies to any kind of programming language. If you ought to play, some of my friends uh, does um, iOS, which is the uh, app, app development, yeah, for mobile phone. So they using uh, DSP accelerator function uh, from Apple Xcode, then they will give you the complex rate. So it's up to the programmer to be able to interpret that plot spectrum or doing some further analysis. Okay, so now I'm going to do the uh, spectrum of this. 
Okay, so we're going to do the spectrum. So this is going to do like that. Okay, it's fairly simple way to do a spectrum. All right, so what we did here then is to say, let's get uh, EBS, which is absolute value of this. So spectrum is, although it's complex, really, we want to get a collective weight from both sine wave amplitude and sine wave amplitude. So the way go to the both amplitude, when the, when the phase is aligned, the certainly they might have a big amplitude. When the phase is not aligned, the amplitude may be canceled out. So collectively, once we get the absolute number of those arrays, we put that into a variable called MCX. And then we also create a, a frequency axis. So, you know, because we didn't do, I mean, uh, well, probably I need to talk about a little bit like this. We didn't do single side FFT. So we display frequency from zero to sampling frequency, which you can see the anything. Okay, so we only take half of them. And the length is a single frequency. So now we're going to actually plot that result, which you can see uh, the estimation of energy of original signal. Okay, so let's review back the original signal. The original signal is this sine wave, okay, sine 2 pi ft, where f is 400 hertz. Okay, let's go run this section and see what happens. Okay, so now I got the plot. Uh, probably you can't see the plot yet, yeah? Sorry, I got this pop up. Yeah. Okay, now can you see the result of the plot? Just uh, give me a quick type. Great. I mean, it's quite, it's quite uh, <laughs> troublesome. <laughs> the window always automatically hide. Anyway, so, okay, so this is the plot of the one I just did. So what you can view here is I, in the code, uh, I don't know if I can do uh, some sort of a, a splitting display, just code by, yeah, we can do that, that's, that's better, okay. Yeah, probably. So we can see the code and the plot one by one, uh, side by side. Yes, it's still window fit to your computer. You can see. Does ABS mean absolute? Yeah, that's right. So Olivia asked, ABS means absolute. That's exactly absolute number of a complex number. Yeah. So uh, okay, let's just uh, since you asked this question. Yes, please. You can type a question on chat window. I can see it. Uh, so just demonstrate this a little bit more. Okay. So if you have complex number three plus four J. Well, MATLAB accepts that. So three, for example, this representing one frequency, for example, a components of FFT, you know only any signal will break down into different frequency components. This, uh, this number, one number represents one frequency. And this frequency uh, is representing both sine wave and cosine wave, yeah? So the real part, which is the cosine wave component amplitude, and the imaginary part four, which is the amplitude of the sine waveform components. So if we want to find this collective frequency weight, it is going to be the absolute number of that, not just the three plus four, but the, the actual triangles, three and four is both uh, sides. You know? So you do ABS bracket uh, three plus four J, and you got number five, yeah? So the five, rather than so five rather than three plus four or whatever three multiply four they're all not wrong so if we treat three and four as a imaginary number oh sorry as a complex number and then the absolute number which is the weight of this complex number is going to be collective magnitude of that frequency so that's why we're doing abs okay okay so now let's look at the result so anybody say i mean i might ask some question so what is the route showing us and what is the problem of the re result? Can I have uh, some uh, signal notes somewhere? I think, yeah, we can have signal notes maybe. Okay, so what I did is I can add in some, uh, yeah, I can move this point. Okay, so in MATLAB, I can actually probably this very small font. What it basically is, I uh, try to click 
this, you can, you can have look at those sparks. So on the right side, this diagram, which I my mouse hover over, is the result of a Fourier transform, uh, DFT, which I implemented. And that basically showing the energy of different free frequency components. And the highlight one, I would put to the, my mouse over, it shows uh, y equal to 10.81, which is the amplitudes, and x equal to 516, which is about the frequency. So any, anybody see the problem of this diagram? My original signal and this are not exactly match, isn't it? So, do, so what is the problem? The problem is my original signal has frequency 400, amplitude one, and now my, I display, this is, okay, so first of all, you can see this is sort of like a symmetric, uh, symmetric diagram, yeah? The symmetric diagram means we actually take a double side. This is called double side at DFT. So we actually take some image. So on the right side, if you uh, imagine there's a middle, middle bit of this uh, diagram, I'm not sure if I can draw something here, probably can't. All right, so this diagram has a, a symmetrical line here. So that's the diagram only valid, only valid to half of sampling frequency. So the sampling frequency is 8,000. So we should display just to half sampling frequency, which is 4,000, isn't it? So because uh, above 4,000, there will be repeating spectrum of original, but in mirrored way. So you can see this looks like an aliasing. So it's a very mirrored of this. So if you continue, it will be mirrored of that. So actually, we don't need to take the whole, uh, you know, uh, spectrum. We only need to take half sampling frequency. But that's what system can expect. So any system cannot display anything above half sampling frequency, isn't it? So when you do a DAW, you design a filter. Your filter will be refined with 20k or 24k, depends on sampling frequency. So this is a problem. How to? The, uh, not problem. This is imperfection of DFT algorithm. So we can only estimate the frequency. So the frequency is around 500 to 258. That's what I said, because you only produce discrete frequency points. So although the, the original signal has energy around 400, which is sine wave, you only should have one spark at 400. But this one doesn't show this result because the reason being, uh, they have probably too few signals. So what, what approach can we improve this? Anybody can type an answer to me. How, we can we, how can we improve the diagram to showing just one energy bar, which uh, represents the 400 hertz, and the rest of the uh, thing become, you know, like less energy? Uh, so Mia said, Adding more points, yeah, that's right. <laughs> so simply adding more points, that's right. Let's put some more points into this algorithm because at the moment, I what I did here, the algorithm. So is uh, how many points I did here? Any anybody can look at my diagram, uh, a code to give a, a, a simple, a quick answer. So how many points at the moment I'm doing in terms of uh, the current algorithm? Yes, thirty-two. Actually. Because it's mirrored, so it is right. Because in the mirror, it's basically, um, you know, in the algorithm, uh, we, we already done 32, that's right. But actually, 16 is valid. Another 16, we only, we only take 32 signal. So n plus 2 divided by 2, about 16 is valid. It's, it's basically contains the information. The rest of 16 sample is just a mirror. OK, so let's then try to, uh, but anyway. So, okay, so before, uh, okay, so first of all, we're going to um, editing this uh, code and make it a bit more uh, comprehensive so we can have more information. Let's just uh, give a bit more information here. So first of all, I'm going to modify that. So let's try to just the display uh, DL, do we need to do that? <clears throat> uh, 
Yeah, but anyway, so we're not going to use that, although we use the DR here, but we're not using it yet. Okay, let's change this value L equal to Sixty-four. Increase a little bit. So run the code here. All right, got more thing, more more data here, because I change the error to sixty-four. So now we should have. Uh, okay, so now we have a better result. That's exactly. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. All right. So you can see. Now what I got is uh, uh, a 64 sample. Now we got a better result, which basically showing 381 as a peak energy. So energy point is better now. And then rest of uh, uh, energy is getting done. All right, so now we can actually say uh, getting more samples, more numbers here. So because we're actually getting uh, how many samples? Oh, one second of sound. So we maximum if we have one second. So this line actually showing we are create one second and then from zero to one. So then we should have maximum eight thousand. We should have maximum eight thousand number. That's maximum number we got. So let's just directly try. Uh, for example, four thousand, four thousand samples. Okay, so. So you can see now it's 381 as estimation results. Still a bit of far from uh, the accuracy we got. So we got 8,000 here. So we run that code again. Well, you probably can't see this diagram because we got loads of, uh, uh, we have loads of now, um, you know, we can zoom it. So we have quite a dense, quite a dense uh, sine wave here. Yeah, so you can see all the sine wave. Now we can see it's all dense together because totally we have 4,000 uh, uh, 4, points of this sample point. Okay, so now let's try this diagram again, see what happens. Wow, wonderful. You can see that's this diagram now very close to the theoretical idea world, isn't it? So you can, oh, because we, we're using sine wave, in reality, it should just like that, isn't it? Just one spark. <laughs> now the estimation of this is 401. So very close to the signal we are looking at. All right, so yeah, so it is interesting. So as long as I've got enough information, because when the signal is going up and down, and we treat this uh, periodically, so more uh, the signal information into the algorithm, uh, it will give you more uh, result. X and Y, okay, Y, all right, so so say this is X, X is frequency, everybody know, yeah? Y is the magnitude, okay, so this is 2000 is not a uh, magnitude, we haven't normalized the magnitude yet, yeah. Why it is magnitude, me ask what is Y? Why is magnitude? So remember, in the last uh, uh, slide, we need to normalize the magnitude. So because we have a 4,000 uh, uh, sample here, so if we propose, so next, next step, I'm going to add in a bit of code to uh, normalize the magnitude. Okay, so the magnitude can be normalized. So here, because you can see this is 2,000. And if we want to estimate, sometimes, uh, uh, okay, I, I, I talk about this later. So first of all, let's do a magnitude normalization. So the simple normalization, here is magnitude, magnitude of complex X, MCX, is equal to absolute value of complex number. Then we need to normalize it, not normalize it, try to find out exactly uh, estimation. So we need to divide by, in terms of the last uh, uh, session's slides, divided by the number of the, the length of the signal divided by two. So we basically the half of the, uh, the length of the original one. So if I do that, and then if I uh, try to plot that again, okay, you can see this now magnitude is more aligned with original one, isn't it? So it's, we have magnitude one really here. Okay, let's test if the magnitude normalization works for different magnitude. For example, this is my signal. 
sine uh, signal equal to sine 2 pi ft with frequency 400 hertz. So let's make magnitude uh, equal to 0 0.8 uh, uh, multiply. Yeah, uh, sorry, it's a typo. Then I, I try to uh, create a signal again, this magnitude, and now you can see the sine wave is 0 0.8 in this diagram, yeah? You can see here it's 0 0.8. And then we try run this algorithm to display the, so now you can see the estimation is 0 0.8. Is that okay, everyone, yeah, so far? So that's uh, uh, quite a practical element, good. So, um, I think it's so, um, okay. So, so why why this 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 is very good example because we have a pure sound. Pure sound means the, is sine wave or cosine wave. This has no harmonic, no noise. But for audio signal, but for audio signal, your estimation of energy again will not be that accurate, even with loads of samples. Even with loads of samples, we now have four thousand samples, so we got very good estimation very good estimation so the the signal is like a, just one energy peak at 400 hertz and amplitude 0 0.8 however if you do uh, fft or dft for um a real like audio recording stuff because uh, uh, you have different especially because of noise and wide noise if you have percussion sound your estimation will not that uh, accurate in terms of original amplitude but it is very good for relative amplitude. For example, you have a sine wave 400, sine wave 500, sine wave 1000. Then you have a, the, the proportion of energy is very important. It is, normally is very accurate. Whereas just single amplitude will not be accurate. Don't worry at the point, we'll give you some exercise in the future because we're looking at a piano uh, simulation. That's kind of thing you can look at the we call uh, relative amplitude of the frequency components. Okay, so finally, I have uh, another, not finally, we have a comparison. Okay, so let's go back to my slide a little bit. Then we're going to uh, show you another uh, thing. Okay, let's go back to my slides. Okay, which is, yeah, okay. So before the current slides is just the demo. I did the interactive demo in MATLAB. Yeah, just showing when you got more, code you got better you know estimation but in my slide it hasn't been normalized the amplitude so let's look at fft so it is stupid i did a, a fourier transform by myself because in reality in reality in all the software it will provide algorithm called fft so what is fft fft will produce exactly the same result as dft but in the fast way in fast way so it's a very clever algorithm which again people saying like einstein relative theory okay only 15 people in the world implement fft from scratch but 50 million people using them every day all right so this kind of fft algorithm so we don't i don't implement mine from scratch by myself uh, but i can implement the dft okay that's already good enough <laughs> just joking okay so uh, fft and uh, um FFT and DFT uh, has a, a tremendous difference in terms of computation. Computation. So if you're really doing serious work, you need to using FFT. Okay. So now let's do uh, uh, um, some comparison of FFT. Okay. So um, I mean, there. The, I think that a couple of slides here is uh, um, an estimation of arbitrary signal. I come back. So let's do a, the FFT and the DFT. Okay, okay, so the whole code, come back to my uh, MATLAB a little bit. Come back to my MATLAB, share my, uh, where's my MATLAB window? Yeah, okay. So the whole code here can be replaced by a single command in uh, MATLAB. So I don't want to teach you that at the beginning because uh, people were lazy and tried to not understand how FFT works, how DFT works. So I'm going to say how I'm going to do that is, uh, uh, using FFT approach. So again, I have prepared the code. And again, I'm going to do some uh, comparison. FFT approach. 
Okay, I have TikTok here. So I have TikTok. So let's do a TikTok around. So by theory, that should be before the for loop. Yeah, before the for loop. And the talk needs to be after you're getting everything ready. Maybe not will be fair comparison. Just get to the um, complex number. Okay, so that's purely for comparison. And I don't need to print out this, so I'm going to comment that out. Okay, okay so FFT. So what 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 does does uh things here is let's have a look signal two yeah signal two okay that's good let's try to see if this produce exactly the same result okay so figure three is done by the code i highlighted this is called fft approach so again it doesn't do any uh, normalization we can do a bit of normalization here so i'm just adding a bit of a normalization so try to run again. Sorry, got an error. Okay, so normalized. Okay, so see, I see. So what we're trying to do here is say all of this nested for loop, this complex uh, in implementation. There are some problem because my, I, I'm actually you present. Uh, with uh, quite fast uh, my desktop so uh, you can say when i run this code here the original code it's quite uh, fast to display the figure here actually if you run a few years ago when i have a lecture on this this take a couple of seconds to display the result it's very slow so what i did here is first of all introduce uh, fft comments so all the all this complex uh, complex array generation sine wave cosine wave can be all done by single comment called fft so the fft will take the signal and uh, uh, output a uh, complex array into y all right so so this line basically does all this uh, tricks so if you type the result y you can see this all complex arrays and then rest of them just the same thing as plot so you only need one comment to plot that but the key thing is to understand the same properties. So you, how many signal of this signal two is important in terms of the accuracy result. So one thing I want to highlight is a speed test. Okay, so uh, I mean, I lost the chat window. Anybody can type something on the screen. So I just bring my chat window back. Thank you. Okay, so what, what happens here is, um, Mm, okay, so we can see I add a tick and a talk. So tick talk is basically to count the time between these two elements, between these two elements. So so what I done here is so we have tick talk around the direct implementation. So this is direct implementation. I according to the equation, what I did is direct implementation of the dft algorithm okay so i got tiktok to count how long it takes for direct implementation all right i didn't edit any, anything you know stupid to try to take the long time just like exactly what uh, formula um, kind of described and then i also have tiktok round fft round fft so this fft signal function is uh, basically uh, using fast version of FT. So we then can test exactly the same signal. Let's make it uh, uh, L equal to 8,000, largest number. So we can compare this speed, the speed around that. Okay, so CRC, and let's run from beginning. Okay, so if I put 8,000 number, because this is maximum number I can put in, all right? So you got exactly the same result. DFT approach, we got 0 0.8 amplitude estimated at, let's have a look, estimation as this uh, 0.400 hertz, very nice. And this is 0 0.8 magnitude, also estimation at 
400 hertz. So they all produce exactly the same result. Uh, this is just a display slightly different scale on Y. Yeah. And you can see the time here on my common window. So using direct approach, it takes 2.42 seconds to calculate 8,000 points. And I am using a big computer with uh, uh, i7 CPU and 8 gig memory, something like that. Whereas using FFT, you just take 0 0.003 seconds. So, so do as if you do a real time uh, kind of analysis, you're always using FFT. I mean, that's kind of a, all right. So that's practical bit. This code can be downloaded online. All right. So I'm going to modify a little bit because I haven't done the scaling on my original code in uh, Moodle. So the, the actual uh, name of this code in this section eight is called DFT demo. DFT demo. If you click that link, it will give you uh, the code. You can try yourself. Let's come back to slide and summarize today's lecture. Okay, so we go back to slides. All right. So we done this. This is basically again. This is my university computer. I five three gig whatever the result is. So then we're looking at uh, um, app tree. If you, this is a sine wave, now we can app, app tree signal. This has a multiple uh, frequency, this uh, discrete example, and you will get estimation of. So, so again, this one hasn't been, y axis hasn't been scaled. But because when you have multiple signals, y axis, even you're scaling down, it will not going to reflect exactly. Uh, amplitude of original signal components, it, but the relation between these components will be much clearer. And normally, you, what you will say is like this spectrum, but now you understand this spectrum is estimation, okay? And indeed, they are discrete. So anything between these two sample points we call frequency bin. This, this, each of this, not for example, point, frequency point, we call frequency bin. Between these two frequency bin, there's nothing information available, but we can actually extrapolate uh, or interpolate, I don't know what you probably call interpolate them with a, a kind of a line connect together. So you can estimate any frequency point, but as you, as you now know, it is only estimation. The more sample most point, the more accurate. And I also talked about fast Fourier transform, a couple of slides talking about how fast it is and uh, the sum, the how, what is the cleverness of, uh, uh, FFT works using some interlens decomposition, which I don't think I have time today to talk about in detail uh, because it's not going to be exam, whatever. But I next week maybe I can review a little bit more to if you people are interested in how that works. I can talk about why it is fast in terms of basically take advantage of a binary sequencing. All right, so this slide is very interesting. Basically, saying you can say from zero to 15 in decimal in binary like this, and if you're trying to do a uh, uh, FFT, so you, you rearrange number in FFT, you have to arrange the sequence number as 0, 8, 4, 12, something like that. But in binary, you can just do one flipping from left to right, you get this sequence number. So basically in computer, you can do faster than any kind of other uh, men sorting or other sorting algorithm. Okay, so I'm not, uh, uh, I think I should uh, shut up now because it's uh, 10, 15, 7, which I'm going to, uh, uh, summarize this so we okay so uh, there's okay there are other few slides if you're looking at the slide they are called short-term FFT what short-term FFT does is to take a piece of signal like a piano all right you break down each of the section because all we did here original signal is we have a pure tone a sine wave all the way through okay and then for music signal like a piano the sound changes over the time. So if we do the FFT over everything, although we got loads of points, but the estimation is not accurate because you just average out the frequency energy. So what we do is we call short-term FFT. Every, for example, 1,000 sample of this uh, piano signal feeding to FFT, then we can get this called three-dimension, no, not, not very smooth three-dimension, but uh, three aspect information in one diagram. For example, you have a block, you can see this kind of like a block of this uh, vertical blocks. So each are, those are the time blocks. Every thousand sample we feed into this algorithm. And the redness 
the redness is the, 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 the energy and magnitude of frequency. And then the y axis probably is the frequency of the energy. So you can have, say, this is a harmonic. Every like a double frequency, they all have a bit of redness. And uh, if it's very hot, a high frequency is very hot, you can see also frequency changing over the time as well. So this is called uh, uh, short time Fourier transform. It's extremely useful, specifically for you guys, uh, audio engineer and music technicians, because you, you're doing this for music signal. The frequency varies over the time. All right, I think there's a few diagrams about the tune, you know, but because the frequency is always changing very slowly, so you can always just scale the frequency and amplitude into a logarithm to say better. A chirp signal, which we're going to do in the future, so you can directly see how frequency uh, as a, the hot point evolve over the time. All right, I think that's today's lecture finish. So any questions now, I can take some questions. If you can type here, or we can also, you can probably also have have a chat over the if you want a voice you can do a voice one as well.